Do words matter? If they do, uh, have the Republicans and the conservatives gone over the top when it comes to the conversation about Planned Parenthood in this country, playing the fear card that the government's not going to be able to function unless we shut these clinics down? This is Vicki Coward, again, who's the president and CEO of the Rocky Mountains Planned Parenthood, talking about the hateful speech that has played into this. We've experienced so much um, hate, hateful language, hateful speech. Uh, such a negative environment has been created around the, the work that Planned Parenthood does around the idea of safe and legal abortion. And we've seen that across the country from all sorts of speakers in the last few months. I can't believe that this isn't contributing to some folks um, mentally unwell or not um, thinking that it's okay to to target Planned Parenthood or to target abortion providers. Are- Joining us now is Don Lodgins. She is the Executive Vice President of Planned Parenthood Federation of America and the Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Don, good to have you with us on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Hi, Ed. What is the what was the atmosphere in Colorado Springs, Colorado before the shooting? Was there a, a, a sense of hostility, and has there been, and has this hateful speech that we have seen in this attack on Planned Parenthood played into an attitude change in America that would that would bring hostilities towards the clinics? Your thoughts? Well, I think uh, first of all, Ed, I just need to say that our hearts are primarily focused at this moment still on the families of the victims, those who are recovering, and of course, grateful to the law enforcement folks who uh, really made this less of a tragedy than it could have been. So thanks to them. Uh, You know, I do think that Colorado Springs, I mean, clearly that community has come together incredibly around this circumstance, but that there have been uh, a history of protesters and anti-abortion sentiment. Uh, but I think it's much broader than that, as others of your guests have said, which is that, you know, the hateful rhetoric, and we heard Ben Carson just on the news earlier today talking about how hateful rhetoric is fueling the conflict in the Middle East and how it fuels the conflict in this country. And that is, in fact, true. And so uh, I do worry that whether this person was uh, an individual taking cues from that kind of talk, and especially the kind of outrageous and offensive and untrue things that have been particularly carried in this presidential primary. So moving forward, what what do Planned Parenthood clinics need to do that they're not doing uh, to protect themselves against violent acts like this? Well, two things I would say is that the safety of patients and staff is our top priority, and we have already strong security measures in place to make sure that our health centers are safe, and the staff there has been praised from the minute this thing happened by law enforcement, by the security experts who were watching alongside for the measures that they took to get everyone in those health centers back behind locked doors to try and keep them safe, and that their training really had paid off, and that the design had really paid off, and I think you heard that the cameras that we deploy in our health centers were then used by law enforcement to actually isolate the gunman and ultimately bring um, bring this to a close. On the other hand, I think it's kind of not to, that you're asking an absurd question, but there is absurdity in the question of, no question. you know, how can we further fortify health centers and schools and theaters and all of the places that are suffering these attacks, rather than a real focus on how can a likely deranged person walk around with an AK-47 and uh, threaten these places. And it just is a little bit of a kind of blame the victim thing to say, now what other measures can we take to arm uh, Planned Parenthood? Do you believe that the rhetoric surrounding Planned Parenthood is inflaming the, 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 the hearts and minds of these twisted people that are committing these acts? Do you think that this, the conversation, the political conversation has played into this? I share the concern, I think, that many Americans have that extremists are creating a poisonous environment that feeds this kind of um, 
attacks on women. Now, this one turned out to be obviously incredibly violent, but women at many uh, health centers, whether they're going for an abortion or birth control, face people standing there yelling at them, seemingly with uh, nobody from law enforcement or anybody saying, hey, that's not cool, or anybody in the community. And, And that all contributes to an idea that it is okay to terrorize and shame and intimidate women. And as we heard Loretta Lynch, our attorney general, said, this was a crime against women seeking health care. And Don, do you think that this will diminish the usage and the uh, accessibility uh, to Planned Parenthood clinics around the country, that there will be a fear factor here and maybe women won't access these services the way they could and should? Well, that is something we absolutely uh, don't want to happen, and that, of course, is often the intention of terrorists and of the kind of people who say these hurtful and harmful things. But the great news is the day after this shooting took place, 28 of 29 health centers in the Rocky Mountain area and health centers all across America. Their doors were open. Their doors were open yesterday, and their doors are open today. And so one of the things is luckily most women, the vast majority of our 700 health centers and the millions of people who come to us will never see a protester, will obviously never encounter any violence. We have a great safety record. But it can create a climate where people worry. And so that's one of the things that we want to do is both reassure people about the safety and security of our centers, but also to say we've got to stop terrorizing women who are trying to get their legal health care in this country. Don Lodgins, I appreciate your time on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Thanks so much. All the best. To Thank you, you Ed. You Bye-bye. Bet. Executive, uh, Executive Vice President of Planned Parenthood Federation of America and Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Don Lodgins with us here.